This year actually took an unexpected turn. Back in March, uh, Dad had some health challenges that popped up. I wasn't scheduled to preach, but he said, hey, you know, go ahead and do it. Easter Sunday. And I was frustrated, to be honest, because I'd been applying to some of the medical schools and hadn't gotten an acceptance yet. So I had that moment at the altar where I'm just on my knees and I'm crying out to God. I'm frustrated. I'm like, what's happening? And God speaks to me right there. He, he revolutionized basketball, and yeah. I believe he really made it a global kind of yeah. ph phenomenon. Uh-huh, uh -huh. yeah. and I agree with you. She's doing that for the N WNBA. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, my goodness, love basketball. I mean, they're so, selling out arenas. I know, which... Which is unheard <laughs> of for the WNBA, especially several years ago. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So did you grow up doing basketball yeah, sports? Yeah, yeah, I, I grew up as an athlete deep in athletics, um, basketball, baseball, football, mm -hmm. just always loved athletics. Um, and, you know, as you get older, I, I didn't really stick with it through the, um, through the you know, junior, senior years of, of high school and then through college, but still love to play recreationally, mm -hmm. uh, still love to to this day. And, and my son now, you know, at 15, he's a sophomore, so he's almost the same height as me. Yes. And so the, the last time, truthfully, the <laughs> last time we played one-on-one -on -one seriously was, I think, um, maybe... August, maybe August of last year. Yep. And uh, and I I beat him, mm -hmm. but it was just barely. <laughs> and so he might have me now. Yeah. Yeah. That's so fun. Oh my goodness, I love it, love yeah. it, love it, love it. So, what was your favorite sport? Was basketball your I'd favorite? Say basketball was probably my favorite sport. Mm -hmm. I, I think I. I really loved baseball and football growing up, but I think as I kind of went through middle school and high school, mm -hmm. I think basketball became the that that prominent sport for me. Yeah. 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 What'd you do for undergrad? Where'd you go? Uh, I went to Oral, Oral Roberts University. For ORU, undergrad? For undergrad, yeah. And grad. And grad school, huh. yeah. And so I actually, I um, did my undergrad study in health and exercise science. I wanted to be a cardiologist. <laughs> At and, the AC, uh, man. Yeah. You're a gym rat. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's I was great. always there. I had classes there, uh -huh. worked out there. Uh -huh. and um, But it was my senior year at Or Oral Roberts University at ORU mm -hmm. where God called me into full-time ministry. Mm -hmm. I, it was it was was during the spring semester. I was three months away from graduation mm -hmm. and God called me into full-time ministry. And mm -hmm. so uh, it changed my trajectory. I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to go into cardiology, mm -hmm. uh, going to med medical school that next year after graduating. But um, God had a different plan. And so I ended up going to the School of Theology uh, for grad school, mm -hmm. you know, there at ORU and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. So, oh, are you great friendships, right? Yeah, absolutely. Still keep in touch with still them? Still keep in touch. Um, you know, I, I have a couple close friends that I still keep in touch with to this day. Um, one of my best friends, we met at ORU. And uh, we weren't roommates, but we met there and, and uh, we're going to school there at the same time. And we still keep in touch. We mm -hmm. actually still talk uh, almost every week um, to be able to encourage each other, pray with each other, mm -hmm. build each other's faith, you know, talk about family and yeah. life. And, uh, and it's really important to have those good friendships. You know, as the Bible says, iron sharpens iron. Sure. As a friend sharpens a friend. Sure. So were you at ORU? And like, so right now the president is Billy Wilson, mm -hmm. right? And then prior to him, what was that guy's name? Uh, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. The leadership I, dude. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And he was in. His name the, escapes me. I know. Rutland. Yeah, Mark Rutland. Mark Rutland. So were you there for Mark Rutland? I were was. you there for Richard Roberts? Any of that? So, so <laughs> I entered in and Richard Roberts. He was in leadership. Yep. Um, and then as I was starting to exit, maybe my last year or two, I think Rutland took over. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, but I was there in the Richard Roberts years. Mm -hmm. And I was there when we didn't know how we were going to pay our bills. I know. <laughs> I so, understand. And so I remember it always being kind of like an, an emphasis and a concern. Yep. A, a faith project, if you will. Yep. And um, but I remember when the the Green family came and made that uh, just big donation and mm. stuff started to turn. Yep. And uh, everybody was just rejoicing. Yeah, I completely understand exactly what you're saying. I yep. get it. I get it. So when you talk about like your calling in your senior year, what did that what did that look like? Oh man! So I had always wanted to be a car cardiologist. I'd always wanted to be a doctor, and to go into the medical field since a you know little kid. And I felt like that's what God had placed me on this earth to do. And it was one day, I think it was February 2007, 
where I was at a conference there at one of the local churches there at what they called a uh, college or a young adult encounter conference. And I was just crying out to God. And I was frustrated, to be honest, because I'd been applying to some of the medical schools and hadn't been gotten an acceptance yet. And so I was kind of frustrated, like, God, you know, what's going on? And so I had that moment at the altar where I'm just on my knees and I'm crying out to God. I'm frustrated. I'm like, what's happening? And God speaks to me right there. Mm. And he says, I've called you into full-time ministry. And I'm like, whoa, 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 God. And I know you've always put on my heart cardiology. Like, like I didn't have a doubt about that. I feel like I'm supposed to be a heart surgeon. And he said, well, you've accurately discerned my calling, but you've misinterpreted what I meant. Hmm. And he said, I've called you to be a spiritual heart surgeon, to do spiritual surgery on the hearts of men, and women, and youth. And that completely like just boggled my mind. I was like, what? Like, how did I miss this all, all these years? And God, you know, continued to speak into me about what he has called me to do. Um, but it was true that I was called to cardiology, mm. but, I, but I misunderstood what that cardiologist meant. Right. I wasn't supposed to be a natural cardiologist. Right. And so, um, so from then on, you know, God led me to go to school at ORU uh, to go back to grad school there. And, uh, and the rest is history. And, and my parents, they were rejoicing. You know, mm. you asked them, wait, well, did you know that your son would go into full-time ministry? And they say, yeah, you know, we always kind of had a feeling. And I say, well... Uh, y'all should have told me. <laughs> I didn't get that memo, but right. uh, but they were always praying for me, mm -hmm. knowing that God would lead me in the right way. Yeah. So when yeah. you did your MDiv, because you can kind of niche it, right? Mm -hmm. You can yep. kind of special. Yep. What was what was your specialty or your focus in the MDiv? You know, to be transparent, I actually I didn't even I didn't fully finish the uh, degree coursework before God called me and my wife into full time ministry. Um, it was August two thousand nine that we moved back to Chicago, uh, where I was from. She's originally from uh, central uh, New York, um, but came down or no, came down to Tulsa for Rama Bible School. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, but God called us, you know, into ministry. And, um, and I said, okay, well, you know, I'll put this on pause and I'll come back and, you know, finish this whenever God would say to do so. But we came in 2009 and said, Dad, you know, I'm ready to serve. We're ready to help out with the youth ministry. And so took over the youth ministry, uh, became international director of Bill Winston Ministries, which was not the plan in my eyes. I didn't, I didn't know about that sure, part. Sure. But Dad said, hey, I want you to do this. I was like, are you sure? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, God had a plan. And so here we are. We've been serving in that capacity, and I've been serving in those roles for over 15 years now. And mm -hmm. God has done some tremendous things. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So growing up, did you want to do any of that stuff? No. Like when you're 10, Not 12 years old? Not at all. all I, right? I, I thought that Bill and Veronica Winston were doing a phenomenal job pastoring and leading, but I didn't think any of that was for me. So mm -hmm. I had zero desire whatsoever to pastor or be in full-time ministry. Uh, and when I look back at it, I think really a lot of it was based in maybe fear and intimidation, right? Uh, feeling that level of insecurity, mm -hmm. seeing the great things that God was doing in them and through you know them in ministry. Uh, it's an interesting thing growing up as a second generation leader because one side of you is applauding everything that God is doing through them. Yeah. And the other side of you is saying like, how could I ever measure up to that? So mm -hmm. I was like, well, this is easy. Take myself out of the race. I want to be a cardiologist. Sure. I don't want to do that. And sure. so there's no, there's no competing, you know, and yeah. there's no sense of insecurity that way. Mm -hmm. Do you have siblings? I do. Mm -hmm. I have uh, two older sisters. And they're both in the ministry as well. They work in the administrative parts of the ministry. Uh, one is the director of uh, property management and real estate. She also oversees our um, Living Fresh Market supermarket, a uh, full oh, nice. service grocery store. And then the other sister is the director of corporate travel. And mm -hmm. so she manages uh, dad's travel schedule, the aviation stuff, um, and then as well as all of our corporate travel um, as a uh, entity in ministry. That's pretty cool. Really yeah, cool. Yeah. So then do you, so like at church, do you do all, some of the preaching and that kind of stuff? Or I what do. Is, what does that look like? I do. And so, so this year actually took an unexpected turn uh, because back in March, uh, dad had some health challenges that popped up suddenly. And so um, I remember I filled in for him. I wasn't scheduled to preach, but he said, hey, you know, go ahead and do it. Easter Sunday, uh, which was the last Sunday in March. Oh my. Which, which was, it, it was 
looking back, it was cool, but also weird mm -hmm. because in the 35 plus years of our ministry, dad had always preached on Easter Sunday, but you know, people came and it's like, Hey, here I am. And, and they're used to seeing me, you know, I would, right. I would preach every now and then. And obviously I was leading the youth. And so seeing me preach wasn't surprised, but it was a surprise on Easter Sunday. Yeah. Um, and I actually, I continued to minister and lead our services every Sunday mm. um, until the end of July. Um, and so, and so now dad and I, you know, we trade off weekends, uh, preaching, but, uh, but I'm there leading and administrating the services and, um, officiating, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, growing up in the youth ministry and leading the youth ministry, I was preaching every week uh, until about maybe four years ago when yeah. we started to do more of a, uh, team style mm -hmm. preaching dynamic. Yeah. So when you got the tap on the shoulder for Easter, was it like the day of, the day before, or did you It have... was the Friday before. Oh, so you had a little bit, good Friday? Little bit of time. It was good Friday. Oh, so you had 48 hours. Yeah, yeah 48 hours, that's right. Of. And so, so uh, I remember mom and dad calling me and saying, hey, uh, get something ready. And I said, okay. Holy How'd you Spirit, prepare? How'd you prepare? What'd you do? <laughs> you know, I had already had some things stirring inside my heart um, and in my spirit. I was prepared to lead our youth service on that Sunday. And so I was, I was going to preach on that, that Sunday for a youth service. And so I had already started to prepare some things, uh, but it was geared more toward youth. But of course, the word is the word. Sure. And so, um, so I said, okay, Holy Spirit will help me redirect this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he gave me a message that I believe really touched people's hearts. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and people got so saved and gave their lives to Jesus that day. Nice. Which is the most important. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So when you do Bible stuff, what do you like to, what's kind of some of your always go-to? Defaults, if you will. Yeah, I'd say my default is faith, of mm -hmm. course, you know, being raised in a faith household. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad teaches faith, uh, teaches, you know, identi our identity in Christ, right? Uh, teaches about dominion and righteousness. And so I think I have a lot of that embedded into mm -hmm. what I preach. I think um, another common thread of what I preach is victory in Christ, mm -hmm. uh, winning in life. You mm -hmm. know, thanks be unto God who's always causes mm -hmm. us to triumph mm -hmm. in life. And I think that that's a lot of what I preach about is how God has um, set us up to have victory no matter what's happening, no matter what the season looks like. We win through um, what Jesus died to provide. You know, he gave us access to that victory and we stand on the word of God to proclaim victory. Mm -hmm. Nice. So not for preaching, just in your own, like at home, mm -hmm. do you drink coffee, tea? Uh, I drink both. Uh, I'd say um, I drink, drink coffee when I want energy. Mm -hmm. I drink tea when I want to kind of soothe my throat yep. or, you know, some chamomile to relax. Yep. And so I think I'm a bit of a hybrid. Mm -hmm. So if you have a nice cup of coffee or chamomile and you have the Bible in front of you and you're not preparing a sermon, mm -hmm. what do you read? I really like reading the Gospels and the Pauline epistles. Right now I'm in First Timothy. Mm -hmm. um, I love reading the Gospels, though. I, I love just reading about Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, his his example, um, his wisdom, uh, the faith that, you know, he always provokes. Um, that's, that's really always my go-to. I love the book of John. Mm. Um, I love the, the Ian's Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, yep. um, and, and Romans. Those are some great books, mm -hmm. uh, that I, I love going to. I feel like we can never exhaust the wisdom and revelation there. Mm -hmm. This is a left turn question. Okay. DC or Marvel? Oh, Marvel all the way. <laughs> but my favorite guy is Batman. Really? My favorite guy is Batman. So mm -hmm. my allegiance is Marvel, but my guy is Batman. Mm -hmm. And and which Batman, who do you like for Batman the most? I got to say Christian Bale Batman. He's pretty epic. I mean, like, mm -hmm. you know, Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, uh -huh. Dark Knight Rises. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, those are classic mm -hmm. movies. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, probably The Dark Knight is an all-time favorite superhero movie for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it. Are you, yeah. Do you like Gladiator at all? I do. I like Gladiator. They're actually, I think, coming out with a second one Woo now. Yeah, yeah. Stoked. So excited. <laughs> I mean, you know, those are some pretty big shoes to fill. Uh -huh. that, that is a historic movie. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. And if you take vacation, what do you like to do for vacation? Oh, I love to go somewhere warm mm -hmm. and sunny. You know, Chicago, obviously we experience all four seasons. And so, <laughs> especially when it's cold in Chicago, go somewhere sunny. I like places that are beach adjacent. 
I don't necessarily like to go to the beach, but I like the warm knowing that the beach is close and accessible. Mm-hmm. I like the ocean, but I kind of hate the sand because it gets in everything and everywhere. Yeah. And so, like, I'll take a walk on the beach and then go back to the pool. Mm-hmm. And uh, But we love the tropics. And so going to, you know, somewhere that's tropical, sunny, that's a, a great destination Mexico, for us. Mexico. Yeah, Cancun, Bahamas, mm-hmm. Caribbean, mm-hmm. taking cruises. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we love all of that. Nice. And reading? Are you a reading fan? I do like to read. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like to read. Usually my reading centralizes on, like, spiritual growth and development Mm -hmm. or leadership. Mm -hmm. Love to read leadership things. Um, You know, I wish I had more time to dedicate toward novels, but I I really like to feel like I'm learning Mm -hmm. as I read. Mm -hmm. And your favorite leadership book that you most recently read? Favorite le- so I'd say my favorite leadership book of all time would have to be The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, John Maxwell. Maxwell yep. I mean, that's a, just a stalwart. Mm-hmm. Um, most le- uh, recent leadership book, um, uh, How Leaders Create Chaos uh, mm-hmm. by Dr. Sam Chand. Yeah. Uh, is, is definitely kind of a paradigm shifting book to help us understand and help a reader understand that God does great things in the midst of what might seem like chaos to us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and so it's, that was a great read. Very cool. Um, do you ever read Atomic Habits? I have not yet, but mm-hmm. it's on my list. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I have that list of books. Yep. Um, that's one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard great things. That's a really good book. Okay. And it's nice because he doesn't talk about like achieving necessarily goals, mm-hmm. but he talks about um, organizing your life so yeah. that you're an atomic, meaning little tiny things like mm-hmm. the electrons, the protons, the neutrons, yeah. and those incremental things that mm-hmm. are you do consistently, steadily, mm-hmm. that push you into, and instead of I want to achieve, I want to run a marathon, instead of the achievement, mm-hmm. he speaks to you about identity. I'm not achieving. I'm not running a marathon. I am a runner. Yes, yes. And I love that. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that kind of goes back to an earlier question that you asked, you know, what do you see as some common threads of what you like to teach? And, yeah. and that right there, I think, you know, those those disciplines, identity, you know, who you are, um, and, and that's kind of, that can really be seen out of, you know, what I write myself as an author yeah. is, you know, living from the inside out, not from the outside in, you know, not necessarily being goal oriented, even though that's good, but, um, identity oriented, you know, who are you will influence and impact what you do. Living from the identity rather than the illusion. That's right. (laughs) That's good. That's that's a soundbite right there. Well, maybe, 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 (laughs) maybe. All right. So I know you like jokes. Yeah. Do you have any like in your back pocket? Hmm. I don't know if I have any that come to mind right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm always like, I have, so a friend of mine gave me a book with jokes and I was like, Ooh, that's so helpful. Cause when you're on the spot, Mm -hmm. your mind goes blank, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like I Mm -hmm. just proved to you. Yeah. I totally am (laughs) on your page, but why do birds fly South for the winter? Hmm, I don't know. Why do that? Easier than walking. (laughs) It's a good one. Kind of lame. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks Sarah.